Okay. Well, welcome everyone. My name is Bruce Mayhew. I'm the WebGoat project lead. You were probably expecting Jack Danahy. Uh, however, Jack could not make it, so he rang me up with very short notice and asked me if I could come in and, and give this presentation. So I thought to myself, you know, who better to give a talk on you know, software security than the author of the probably most insecure web application out there. Um, I'm, if all of you are familiar with WebGo, it's a deliberately insecure application. It takes a lot of bashing, but uh, it, it definitely serves its purpose. I work for Allen Slabs. Uh, just because I work for Allen Slabs doesn't, um, uh, you know, when, when I'm talking about source code analysis, um, you know, and automated tools, it's any automated tools, not particularly our tool. So every layer of defense is critical. A lot of money is being spent on areas outside of the source code. And as these areas become better protected, the application source code is what's actually starting to take the brunt of the attacks. In fact, I'm sure you all have seen the chart where 75% you know, of the attacks are coming in at the application layer, 25% are coming in at the network layer, but 90% of the money is still being spent, spent on network infrastructure versus 10% of the money being spent on you know, source code analysis, application security. So you know, the, the place that we really need to focus is right here. Every dollar spent on securing your source code has more incremental value than a dollar spent on the other areas. Now, I would say that it's very, very important that we have a secure infrastructure, because if you don't have a secure infrastructure, you know, I mean, What's the point of having a secure application if someone can just knock over the box? So it's, it's very, very important to have that secure infrastructure. It's also very, very important to have these other technologies. They definitely play a role in preventing application level attacks. Uh, the thing that I like here is this, this number by um, InfoWorld. By 2009, 60% of all IT organizations are going to make application security vulnerability detection an integral part of their SDLC. How many people in here actually have application security as part of their SDLC right now? Well, that's, okay, that's way less than 60%. So in three months, you know, almost all of you, or at least half of you, are going to have you know, application security as part of your SDLC, or vulnerability detection, security, software security vulnerability de detection. So security, it's, it's really got to be an, an enterprise responsibility, you got, a, you got a lot of people out there that need to consume the information that's provided from source code analysis. You have those, you know, those poor executives where they, you know, they have thousands of applications and they have no idea, or at least most of them have no idea what's going on in the software. You know, where is the risk? What is the risk? What do I need to do about the risk? You have the security analysts. Those poor guys, they're the ones that have to look at thousands of applications. Hey, how do you how do you look at millions of lines of code and quickly assess whether or not that code is secure or insecure? And better yet, how do you come up with you know, risk recommendations and, and remediation strategy for those particular types of vulnerability? And as you, and I have developers down here on the, on, the, on the bottom right because I think that uh, too much focus is, is being spent on the developer problem. Uh, it's a good goal to have your developers write secure code but it's not always a software fix that's going to solve your problem. It, it's, it's very important in, in that you have to, you, you do have to understand that sometimes there are other remediation strategies other than fixing the, the actual source code. And the auditors, you know, they're their own special breed. They need to be able to, um, you know, basically say, hey, this stuff is secure, you know, or, you know, there are no vulnerabilities in this stuff, the stuff being your source code. So this is, a, this is a survey that we've been running at the, the last several trade shows that we've been at. And we actually have a, um, a survey form downstairs at our booth if you want to go, go fill it out. And one of the questions that we ask on there is, what drives security policy at your organization? And you know, I would pretty much expect to see this, this type of, of a, a response. 50% you know, are saying they don't want to see security breaches. You know, security breaches are, are generally bad. Um, you know, compliance and legislation, 43%. Protecting brand image, nobody wants to end up on the, you know, the cover of the Wall Street Journal because you expose, you know, two million of your customers' credit cards. So the, the thing to drive out of this is that 
most of these concerns can only be addressed by looking at the source code. We need to spend more time looking at the source code. I mean, your worst case scenario is, is that customer data, someone's stealing the credit cards. Right? All of a sudden, you have lost complete trust with your customer. This is, a, this is a, another one of the questions, and I actually like this one. Um, it, it's very telling. You know, have there been any attempts to compromise your organization's data? Well, 60% of the people kind of really know what's going on out there. They said yes. 23% said they don't know. That, that's understandable, too, because you got you know, developers who don't really have a lot of insight into you know, what's going on in the network. Um, you have other people that just they, they don't have access to the network logs or the, the web access logs, so they're not really seeing all the different attacks that are coming across. The number that surprises me is the 15% that said no. So either these guys are running in a, a very, very isolated environment, like maybe inside of a, you know, a secure room, right, or they just simply have no clue of what's going on out there. I mean, 15%, that's a, that's a pretty big number. 15% of the people say, no, we're, we are not being attacked. I, 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 would, I would say that you know, these guys don't really know what's going on in, in, in the world. I've looked at the, the, you know, the access logs and the firewall logs. There are just tons of attack strings inside of these logs. You ever have one of those moments where you just look at a slide and you just completely forget what you're supposed to say? <laughs> this, 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 would be, this would be one of them. So source code comes from many places. Um, you know, source code comes from your internal environment. It comes from external environment. It comes from you know, outsourced, app, you know, outsourced providers. It comes from open source. Um, you know, the, we are constantly being exposed to these problems of where you know confidential information is being exposed right so you really have to understand you know where all of your source code is coming from so that you can truly focus on the right problem you, and you know so what you want to do is you want to protect against data loss you want to be able to automate being able to you know say hey am i in compliance with pci or am i in compliance you know with with owasp or you know whatever secure coding guideline or standard that uh, that you're that you're following and this, this bottom right, I, I like this one because everybody knows that you need to, the earlier you detect a problem, right, the less costly it, it is to fix. And um, actually, let me switch back to open source really quick. I'm giving a malcode presentation in, um, in DC, I think in November. And I'm, I'm more of a technical person. I'm not the 50,000 foot view person. And this is kind of a 50,000 foot view talk. So I, I struggle with those 50,000 foot view com, um, concepts. So in, in, anyhow, I'm giving a, a talk on malcode. And one of the one of the things that we that we were looking for was some good examples that are sitting out in the open source community today. And so I, you know, I just did a quick search and I came up with OpenOffice. OpenOffice 3.0, um, I think it's RC2 beta. So the very very latest version of OpenOffice is just littered with Easter eggs. And Easter eggs are those playful little programs that you know that you can you know type in some special command sequence and you know Star Wars or Space Invaders or Frogger pops up. And right, so here we have. You, know, you have a, a, an open source application right, that you're downloading you know, onto your environment, and it's running a very complex graphical user interface. You're playing Star Wars. What else is going on in that code? 